Hello everyone, welcome back, welcome to LRDI Prep. So in this video, we are going to discuss the next case in coin picking and matchsticks problem where the person picking the last coin is winning the game. In the earlier cases, we discussed the controlling factor for those questions where the person picking the last coin was winning the game. But what if the person picking the, sorry, the person picking the last coin was losing the game. Now here, we are going to discuss the person picking the last coin is winning the game. So here is a second case players who picks the last coin will win the game. How will you decide the controlling factor in this case? Two smart players A and B are playing a coin game in which they can pick one, two, three or four coins. Standard instructions. They have 83 coins and the players who pick the last coin will win the game. A and B play alternatively and A plays the first move. How many coins should A pick at first? So his win is independent of the number of coins that B pick in his first move. So the change here is that the person who is picking the last coin is winning the game. Now let's derive the controlling factor in this case. So there are two things that you need to take care. Number of coins left on the table for A. Number of coins left for A. And the second thing is the number of coins left for B. The number of coins left for B. So these are the two things that we need to take care of. Now let's see. We need to start from the last step. Now, if the player who is picking the last coin is winning the game, then tell me, think over it, what should be the number of coins that A should get in his last turn? That means if a is supposed to pick the last coin that means all possible number of coins that a person can pick should be on the table so that a wins the game that means a should be getting one coin or a should be getting two coin or a should be getting three coin or a should be getting four coins if in the last turn if a is getting any of these coins on the table he will pick if he is uh, he will win the game right if one coin is table a will pick it if two coins on the table, if A will pick it and win the game. If three coins are on the table, A will pick it and win the game. If four coins are on the table, A will pick and win the game. That means B should be having zero coins, right? Now before this turn, before this turn, B will be having how many coins on the table so that whatever number of coins B pick, A should be getting any of these number. Now if A picks one coin, B should A should have four coins left. Now, what would be the number of coins on the table so that if A pick one coin, B have four coins left to pick? That means there, if there are five coins on the table and A B pick one coin out of it, then you see that A will be having four for the <coughs> four for himself and he will pick all the four and win the game. If B pick two coins out of it. If B pick two coins out of it, that again five minus two will be three. Then B will have A will have three coins. Then he will pick all three coins because he can pick three coins and will win the game. And if B pick three coins, then A will have two coins, right? If B pick four coins, then A will have one coin. So if five coins are placed on the table for B, whatever number of coins that B pick, A is definitely going to have the numbers of his choice. And he will pick the all any of these coins and will win the game, right? Now, what will happen before five? You see that? Now, let's let me is this part okay? Just give me a minute. So we have to see what will happen just before this, right? What will happen just before this? Okay. Five coins are on the table now, and A is leaving five coins for B. So now what should be the coins that A should be getting for himself so that whatever number of coins that A pick, B is left with 5 coins. So if A pick 1 coin, B is having 5 coins for himself. That means 6 coins should be on the table. If B picks 2 coins, A picks 2 coins, B should be having 5. That means 7 coins should be on the table. If A pick 3 coins and 5 coins be left for B, that means A should have 8 coins on the table. If A picks 4 coins and leave 5 for B, that means A should have 9 coins for on the table. So if any of these number is available, then A can manipulate the game by leaving 5 coins for B. Okay. And then what will happen before this? 
Now, whatever number of coins B pick, A should be having any of this number. If A picks one coin, he should left nine for. If B pick one coin, he should like leave nine coins for A. That means there should be ten coins on the table. So now you see that if B pick one, A would be have having nine. If B pick two, A would be having eight. If B pick three, A will be having seven. If B pick four, A will be having six. So whatever number of coins B pick, A will have his number of his choice, right? So ten coins should be on the table. Now look at this controlling factor. You see that all these numbers are multiple of five. This numbers are of the form of five k. So five k is a controlling factor in the case where the person picking the last coin is winning the game. So therefore, if I'm having eighty three coins on the table and A and B are winning, if A and B are playing the game and A is the one who is starting the game, then tell me what should be the coins A should pick. So that he leaves behind a number which is of the multiple of five. Okay, now tell me a number which is a multiple of five less than eighty-three. That number is eighty, right? Eighty is a multiple of five. So if A want to leave eighty coins for B, then what should be the number of coins A should pick? A should pick three coins. So in the first move, A should pick three coins, leave eighty for B, and A will definitely win the game. Now the direct method of solving these questions where the person who is picking the last coin will win the game. the direct controlling factor which we are trying to derive this in this way you can directly use it if you use this concept minimum number of coin plus maximum number of coins multiplied by k that's it this is the controlling factor in the cases where the person winning the last coin is winning the game what is the minimum number of coins that you can pick here is 1 what is the maximum number of coins that you can pick is 4 so that's why direct controlling factor can be taken as 5k so this will give you a direct method of finding it okay you don't have to go with this way now let's let's move to this question just for your understanding two smart players a and b are playing a coin game in which they can pick one up one two three four coins they have 89 coins and the players who pick the last coin will win the game so this is a case where the person winning the last coin is winning the game so what will be our controlling factor if i don't want to go theoretically if i don't want to go conceptually direct method of controlling factor is minimum number of coins that a person can pick plus maximum number of coins a person can pick into k what are the minimum number of coins one what are the maximum number of coins two multiplied by k sorry maximum number of coins are not two the maximum number of coins are four so one plus one plus four into k that is five k five k is a controlling factor right you will get it directly so if there are 89 coins on the table a and b are playing the game A and B are playing the game. What should be the controlling factor for A? What should be the controlling factor for A? Five K. That means A want to leave a number which is a multiple of five. Now tell me a number which is a multiple of five and less than eighty nine. That number is eighty five. So now, if A want to leave eighty five coins for B, so what should be the number of coins A should pick? A should pick four coins. So in this case, answer the question is four. So we have done eight questions till now. Now there are some cases. where whatever number of coins that a pick it's not possible for a to win the game even if a is you know uh, starting the game so what are those cases that comes under the category third category number 3 that will be discussed in the next video thank you so much for watching this video please subscribe to the channel and use my referral code lrda samir to get 10% off on an academy plus subscription this will give you unlimited access of all live sessions which are happening on our academy and you'll be able to attend all of my live sessions on an academy plus for quantitative aptitude logical reasoning and data interpretation thank you so much for watching this video see you in the next video where the case number 3 will be discussed what are those questions where the number of coins whatever number of coins a is speaking even if a is starting the game a is definitely going to lose the game that would be under the category number 3 that is case number 3 which we will be discussing in the next video thank you so much for watching this video please share the channel with all of your friends and subscribe to the channel and click on the notification button thank you